great day to be alive, isn't it? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm guessing that some of you, you're not happy. Maybe you don't fit in. People make fun of you. Well, I can't make you straight, but you give us this week and we might be able to help. Boys cabin over there, girls cabin over there. I use they them pronouns, as in they can't believe they're at this camp. I have zero interest in not being gay. There's no judgments in this room. Sometimes I wish I was invisible. I would understand it a lot more if there was Bible thumping and queer bashing. Do you even believe in any of this? Come in, please. Do you think your parents are disappointed in you? Sometimes. So what do you do? You try to make yourself special. You become they. Today, we're going to be exploring traditional gender roles. Look how long they've been doing this. It's time to play. This could get a lot worse. Where's my killer? We need to get out of here. Taste? Just enjoy the sunshine and work on your tan. It's been a minute. You and I last spoke on here in uh, February. God damn. Don't we say every fucking episode, we're like, all right, let's not go like six months again without recording. And tomorrow's July 1st. <laughs> we got it down to uh, four, four and a half, five months. <laughs> we're getting there. A little more consistency. Busy as fuck. Oh, God, yeah, dude, this has been the fucking weirdest, wildest year. All kinds of shit fucking... Uh, where to begin? I assume we're rolling, and we're just going to roll right into the cell, as, as we usually do. Yeah, why not? So, uh, yeah, before before we get to all that, I have a, a point, of, point of business here. So, <laughs> uh, I visited my local... Uh, these aren't really dispensaries, because all they sell is, like, CBD shit and Delta 8 shit and all, all that stuff that I don't quite understand. I went and paid them a visit today uh, for, for some supplies for this holiday weekend here. Uh, we're recording this the last day in June 2023. Uh, so still technically Pride Month, and we'll get back to that here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I visited my local uh, Potheads Gone Legit here here in my hometown. And um, as I was checking out, they're like, hey, man, have you tried any of our mushroom products? And I was like, uh, what? Because we, I, we, I definitely do not live in one of the, the two or three, I think, states now where mushroom stuff is even decriminalized. I, I, I've, I've heard rumors of a few dispensaries in Denver selling, like, you know, psilocybin products, uh, which I, I still don't think is legal because it's only decriminalized in these places. There's, like, no... Uh, definitely federally you know mushrooms are it's, it's still the same thing as weed it's illegal across the board but you know on a state level or whatever if you get caught with a bag of mushrooms in certain places it's like denver somewhere in california san francisco maybe uh and yeah, somewhere portland, probably. portland yeah i think you're right all the, all the same places that are usually pretty liberal as far as this stuff goes are like you know a very very small step away from basically selling psilocybin in fucking stores which is uh, really exciting and also has me a teeny tiny bit worried because they also used to be, I think you can still get like certain kinds in Amsterdam, uh, but they were legal there for decades and decades. And it wasn't until like, I, I want to say within the last 10 or 15 years that they made them illegal because a bunch of fucking tourists came around and took them and got a little too wild and crazy and shit happened and uh but anyway uh so yeah I, as i was checking out this these like uh we got these mushroom products uh we have gummies and chocolates and we had a few people tell us that the chocolates didn't really do anything so by all means if you take this like this is like a new product for them apparently that they don't make or anything there's you know it's just a shop they just sell the shit but so they were like if these don't do anything like definitely come back and tell us but also if they do something come back and tell us so for five dollars each i bought two of these uh 
This is by a company. This is not an endorsement at all, by the way. This is, if anything, this is a science experiment. I'm going to munch on this thing. Uh, this is not psilocybin. It's, I can't. This has the tiniest fucking printing on the back of this thing. Like I feel like I need trifocals to read this shit. Some uh, Willy Wonka fine print going on. Yeah, yeah, but it does say does not contain psilocybin in pretty big fucking letters. The dude at the shop told me this is made from some sort of extract of like amanita mushrooms, which I have never tried. I'm sure at some point on the show, I probably mentioned I've tried psilocybin more than a few times. But uh, yeah, this is a big ass fucking uh, probably amanita gummy. Yeah, the dude at the shop told me he tried one and it was kind of like a mild mushroom buzz. But like the back end of it is it makes you feel a little more drunk, kind of, which is historically is kind of what I've heard Amanitas do. I also know. Uh, yeah, this, this is not. Oh, there's two of them in here. This is not in any way an endorsement. Kids don't try this at home. Uh, if I die on this fucking podcast, I, I, I want the information of the product out there that I took. This is these are called magic mushies. They're kiwi berry gummies by a company called high exotic uh it doesn't yeah there's no real indication about any kind of dosing i assume i'm supposed to take two of them but there's nothing about you know usually when you buy like a like a weed edible it says how many milligrams are in it but this doesn't really doesn't really specify and the ingredients are so fucking small that i can't so something about a proprietary nootropic blend well one, two, better not sue. Down the hash. If you do enjoy yourself, I am not opposed to a paid advertisement for recreational mushrooms. Uh, yeah, yeah. If these actually do something, then this isn't just a huge fucking scam. Then by all, by all means, high exotic, reach out. I'll, I'll pimp your fucking wares. I don't give a shit. I mean, you know, there's so many cool things nature does. Uh, you know, us be trying to keep in the same lane. I had a friend who was like an Eagle Scout. Wow. And he would be just like, oh, here, I'll show you the, you know, here's the plants you can eat that make you kind of trip. And just like, you know, he was that kind of guy, you know, skateboarded, played soccer, fucking without shoes on. Like, uh, pretty cool dude. Uh, wow. But yeah, he, uh, like knew all these cool like things that just like grow on the side of the like there's one i forget what the fuck it was called uh but it would grow by the railroad tracks like a plant yeah like like ah. a plant and i was like oh okay yeah yeah right there's, there's there's zillions of them that are like at least you know to some degree hallucinogenic well and you you live in the wild west and we are talking about mushrooms but how you know we're talking about like cbd and thc and I never got great grades in science, but I do often watch videos of scientists talking about weed. Wow. And, uh, like, drawn out the molecule for CBD and THC look pretty much identical, except for one part of the molecule is open and the other one is closed. Right. Uh, I, I know when you, like, 3D graph it out, it's a bit different, but it's like, man, I miss... <laughs> I, I miss the whole become a weed scientist arc. Oh, it's it's yeah. come it's come insanely far since like we were you know basically teenagers or whatever. Yeah, I, I never thought there would be this much science put into fucking getting high, but you know how how naive I was. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they're they're discovering all these other fucking things in weed, like you know uh, the CBD CBDA and fucking. HCC and they're all yeah like basically just a molecule off from THC which is technically the only part of the plant that's like completely still totally a federally controlled substance so yeah it's it's kind of a weird workaround it kind of reminds me of my days back in the day of perusing fucking research chemical websites for uh, <laughs> and this was a long time ago, so this isn't me admitting to a crime. And also, I never order. I never had the balls to order these things because it just seems like such an easy way to get your money stolen, or to get some some fucking poison, or to get sent some shit that does nothing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was like a whole, and I'm sure it still is. I just haven't. I'm not gonna fuck with that shit. But yeah, if, if you you know dig in the the seedy dark corners of the internet, you can find just about anything including 
sort of legal, you know, analogs of stuff like LSD and fucking MDMA and, uh, you know, stuff like that that is one molecule away from the the real deal, which makes it kind of legal. And, yeah, it's marketed as a research chemical, basically, for, for research purposes only, kids. Don't be ingesting this. waiting to find out if I, uh, I don't want to get in well I do want to get into politics immediately but I don't want to get into politics drugs are political absolutely we are waiting to find out if enough signatures were gathered we, we have recreate or not we don't have recreational here uh, we have medical. medicinal here right and like generally possession of below three and a half ounces of flour is like a finable misdemeanor yeah, but there I think there have been enough signatures gathered for I, I don't know. I mean, it's I kind of like how blatant it or like how, how clunky this the name of this bill is. But you kind of wonder if like it would be better if it had a cool one, but it's regulate. I, uh, I, I believe it's regulate marijuana like alcohol bill. <laughs> Oh, really? So, I mean, people... That was like the nickname for prop whatever the fuck it was in Denver when they first legalized, too. That was kind of the whole the whole motivation behind that. It wasn't officially called that or anything, but that was kind of the, the idea behind it was to actually regulate weed like alcohol. And I, the Colorado, I'd say, is pretty well stuck to that, so... Yeah, you know, and maybe it's like a cool left wing version of like Alec and stuff. All the right wing people that just write like, "Here's how you get rid of abortion," and everybody has that law. How do you pick on trans kids? Yeah. And they all have the same law. They just scratch out the name and write the new name. Maybe there's finally some like pro marijuana and pro choice and pro like other things that are be coming around because like the children of the wealthy assholes now have their money yeah, and, or so. But, um, yeah. So, you know, you can homebrew here. We actually have pretty, they re or they laxed a bunch of the alcohol rules because they were trying to get the first American brew dog brewery here, uh, out of the, was that in Scotland or England? Is that where Brew Dog originally from? Uh, it's either one of the two. Our Scottish friend Duncan talks about about it all the time, so I'd assume it's Scottish, but I could be wrong on that. But yeah, I remember you talking about that, how they wanted to build like a not just a brewery, but like a big ass fucking like resort centered around Brew Dog in your in your neck of the woods. They do have that. It's kind of out in the suburbs, um, but not hard to get to. You know, on the freeway, basically, yeah. not too far from downtown, really. But yeah, they have like a hotel and, you know, they have beer coolers in the shower, I think even it's, <laughs> I, I haven't stayed there, but they also, you know, have a deal with the hockey team that we have here as stuff. So there's a bunch of brew dog at the uh, arenas, but they made it so you could have like up to 36% proof beer or something Holy like that. Sh- shit why would you um, need that <laughs> just in case I, some there's like some stuff called like dragon's milk and some other things that are like really boozy like you right. take a bottle or two of dragon's milk and you're like it's just kind of like oh shit i guess 36 percent is kind of roughly where like mead is i think yeah you know it's a little bit below gas station uh whiskey <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's kind of between whiskey and beer and that weird like yeah because because yeah i can't i can't imagine drinking a beer that is you only i would only be able to get through one because i'm a fucking lightweight and i would probably need to go home <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i tend to you know i try at least to just have like a cocktail or two or like a shot and then drink some soda yeah uh. Uh, you know, went and saw the. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. The tree, the regular. This is the sidetrack show. Don't worry about it. We yeah. didn't really, we don't really have a super specific topic. We we're recording this during Pride Month, so we kind of yeah. toyed with the idea of talking about some LGBTQ plus kind of kind of movies. If we get to that, cool. If not, you know, whatever. <laughs> if not, it's a to be continued. Yeah, we'll we'll get to it next time. But yeah, it's, it's been a while, so we got we got plenty of stuff to yeah. talk about. We're having our, it's our uh, psycho beach semantic 
<laughs> summer party or psycho shenantic well, let's come up with a good uh summary fucking around kind of party how do leftists feel about beaches? Do they feel kind of the same way about you know, this? They do golf courses where it's just a bougie fucking giant waste of real estate I think, or beaches for the people. I think it varies. I think uh, when I do go to the beach, which I do not like the beach, uh, but I married a leftist who likes the beach. Um, right. I am more of a, the beaches for the people. Like I don't really respect the, uh, this straight imaginary line uh <laughs> no borders fuck the border as propagandi said but when they they're like you can't be in this area this beach is for the people who stay in this one condo um yeah I, that doesn't really bother me and usually people i agree, I agree. Be on the beach because you know i i look out of place at the beach <laughs> I am kind of chuckling imagining you at the beach with your fucking huge mohawk and shit. Yeah. I've got a couple pictures and you could barely tell that I'm like at the beach, except for maybe my shoes are off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, Amanda's dad lived in Florida for a while. So sometimes we would go down and there and she, yeah, she, she got accustomed to the beach. But anyway, yes, another I'm going to side tangent into this other tangent about if anybody is listening and you are registered to vote in Ohio, it would basically be like anyone 21 or over can consume it and with the same sort of limitations, like don't don't get high and drive or whatever, which right. I'm not sure how they're going to. I mean, yeah, uh, I think that's all just roadside sobriety shit because they don't have like a breathalyzer for fucking weed. I, yeah. I know they were trying to get that off the ground, but I don't think the science and shit, or, you know, it's, it hasn't been put into use yet. So, yeah, I think they are for sure busting people for DUI in, like, Colorado for weed. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's uh, you failed the roadside sobriety test, and we found fucking a freshly smoked blunt in your fucking ashtray. So, <laughs> duh. Yeah, so, so, yeah, be, be smarter than that, people. Go home or, you know. That. Go home. Go, for, can, go for a walk. Yeah, you know, you can sell it. Uh, amongst each other as people sell each you know people can home brew so you can home grow nice and, you know it, it can't be like oh i home grow and i sell to a thousand people it, it's it's more like a deal between a couple people is, right uh, okay. you can't be setting up a fucking shop as the the weed grower of the whole yeah. town or whatever at least i think that part is in but the whole 21 and over uh consume like uh that you can have you can grow at your own house I think three, three or four plants, which is enough for personal use. It's like three or four per person. So if two adults, you could have twice as many. So this, this is technically like a recreational bill, right? Like this it, doesn't. It would be. Yeah. I mean, there will be stores. It won't be like stores can't exist, but it's kind of like food or, you know, yeah. Like I said, with uh home brewing, like I know like five people at least that make their own beer at home. You know? Right. <laughs> uh, probably more than that. But so that is supposed to be on the November ballot. At least it looked like the signature gathering was good. Um, the state house, of course, is trying to block it because we have a really fucking crazy gerrymandered supermajority. Uh, they're also forcing a special election to try to get people to vote to give up less power of creating laws because uh pro like enshrining abortion rights into our state constitution has gathered enough signatures to go on the november ballot right so last year the state house outlaw or passed legislation making like out getting rid of august elections because it has the lowest turnout something like six to twelve percent of voters show up and it right. costs you know 15 to 20 million dollars to have the election so they outlawed it for everything except for like appointing new members of uh the house or the senate or something like that okay well then the abortion thing uh or like abortion rights you know pretty expansive like just freedom of medical choice uh got enough signatures to go on to the november ballot 
And so then they were like, okay, well, we're going to pass a law to reinstitute August elections, and we're going to pass a law to put on the on the special August election a thing that now to pass things like the abortion law, you have to have uh, 60, uh, more than 60% of the vote. Instead of right now, it's a simple majority of more than 50%. So you have to have 60% or more. Is yeah, what you have to have 60% proposing. or more. So 40% of voters could block anything from happening in this in this area. Which is harsh shit. Yeah. Uh, to pass the law making it so it has to be 60% on this August election that they were going to reinstitute. To pass it, you only need 50% plus one in a special election where six to 12 percent of the people show up (laughs) it went to the state supreme court which has the governor's son and somebody else that he appointed on the court now who were like you don't have to follow the law that you passed last year outlawing because they couldn't get enough votes to reinstitute the august election so they just said fuck it Right. We're going to take it to the court. And the court said, yeah, you don't have to follow laws you pass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are having, uh, I think it's been challenged, but the Supreme Court just went on vacation. So I don't really know what can be done about it now. Uh, and I believe ab- absentee ballots have been sent to military personnel so they so they are having the election. Then, it seems like August. they are having the election under uh, congressional districts. Now, this is a statewide vote, but the representatives that voted for it were elected in an election under districts that were ruled an unconstitutional gerrymander. Um, Jim Jordan is one of the Congress famous Congress people from our state. He's a uh, notorious Twitter villain. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait for that documentary about him and Ohio State comes out. Uh, hopefully, he's it the, does the football good. coach or whatever, right? Wrestling football coach that ignored wrestling sexual coach. abuse. I think that's the, right. I think the team doctor was shown to have molested like over a hundred, a hundred and fifty students. Jesus! And then he killed himself when he was uh, indicted. And Jim Jordan was a assistant wrestling coach for the team. And the captain of the team and other players said that they came to him and said that they were pretty sure the doctor was doing stuff to them that shouldn't be done. And he was like, he ignored it. Yeah, he ignored it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so they are trying to block the pro abortion uh, constitutional amendment by having a special election in August. And changing I, the rules. And changing the rules. With, I maybe, I don't know, uh, I, I got recorded talking about it a little bit by one of the main groups that are like, fuck this, we're going and knocking on doors, telling everybody to vote against this stupid fucking shit. Yeah. Uh, I may show up on YouTube or Twitter or something, but my mohawk was down, so... <laughs> You know, <laughs> they may not recognize you. Yeah, you might not recognize it. They might not use it. I, I was like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm so vain. But like I was, you know, I just sat down for dinner and I usually don't answer the door when somebody I don't know knocks. But I people are getting smarter and holding up their clipboards and I can see like what they're there to talk about. Oh, well, that's kind of courteous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I like popped out. I was like, yes, I totally support you. No, I'm not giving my credit card information just in case you're going to ask <laughs> uh, for a donation. I'll donate another way. Right. But um, so, yeah, we, we may have uh, abortion rights and marijuana on the 2024 ballot where. Uh, what? Joe Biden, who. Doesn't totally suck, but is very disappointing versus yeah. um, 
what twice or thrice indicted Donald Trump is my guess about the next election. More than that's uh, that seems to be where it's going. They were talking fucking what's his name DeSantis for a while. Old Florida boy. Uh, yeah, uh, Trump without the indictments. Uh, well, Mickey Mouse will cut off his balls and then they won't allow him to run in the Republican primary. <laughs> and uh, but you know what? I don't know if we need to talk about those fucking people because. The inevitable is the inevitable, and Thanos isn't here right now. We are talking about drugs and partying and pride, and I don't know. <laughs> Did you ever watch the the that movie that we talked about maybe doing? Which they them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched. Yeah, I watched it back whenever the hell we were talking about it last. I uh, was so it was early this year, late last year, or something. <laughs> I think it was last. Yeah, <laughs> last time so I didn't, it was warm out. Yeah, I didn't rewatch it for for this episode specifically, but yeah, I, I have I have seen it. I mean, we could talk about it a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's I, a. I don't mean to cut you off, but I wanted to say that like we could either totally skip over that and talk about the other shit which I'm cool with. Or if we do talk about it, we should probably be brief and vague because I bet it's still kind of like a spoiler alert kind of movie. Cause I don't know a whole lot of people that have seen it. You know, I, I mean, it's been out for a couple decent. of years, but yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't know a ton of people specifically that come to mind that actually sat down and watched it. It was on Peacock, I think, mostly. So, like, our, our international listeners may not be able to access that shit. Yeah, or where I don't know who else carried because it was put out by Blum. It's Blumhouse, right? Not Bloomhouse. Yeah, it was put out by Blumhouse. That I know, Jason Blum was a. Uh, like the producer or the executive producer. That's probably how they got Kevin Bacon. Right. But I figured if we do talk about it, we should probably be relatively vague, maybe bring up a couple themes and tones, or we could just be like, yeah, this is this show. Sometimes we don't even talk about a movie and we both watched it yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. This one, this one we definitely watched a while ago. So like, I'm, yeah, I, I, I do remember how it ends. It? Uh, I would. I, I saw a lot of people that didn't like it. The Letterboxd reviews are kind of <clears throat> not not super kind to this movie. It, it is kind of corny. Uh, it's like kind of a, you know, brief. Uh, I got a notification that my computer is not plugged in. Uh-oh. Well, well, if you want to check on that, I can ramble for a couple seconds. Like, I think it's corny, like a 70s or 80s camp slasher movie can be. Oh, I know why. But it was made, you know, a couple of years ago. So, but there's still the, you know, the creepy tracking shots, the in the woods alone stuff. There's the random aggressions. There's the counselors. Uh, and the, although I guess not a whole lot of straight up slashers have have the kids there usually it's the counselors getting ready for the kids to show up but, but uh, did, did you mention that the this this particular camp is a uh 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 jesus christ i'm blanking what they're fucking called conversion <laughs> uh, therapy a conversion therapy camp a you're no longer gay camp or trans camp uh <clears throat> which i thought <coughs> excuse me Fucking Mushrooms voice fucking kicking in. Up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Take a drink. Uh, yeah, right. it's a Whistler something. Uh, Kevin Bacon is from the Whistler family. Um, he is the head counselor. What his wife is the like lunatic psychologist and my girl is the camp nurse. It's her Anna Klumsky Chumsky. Is that who that it. is? Yeah. Uh, oh shit. The, the girl from my girl. I, 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 I thought it was, um, I thought she was looked like Chloe Savingi, but knew that it wasn't her. 
So when the first time I watched it and then I looked it up, I was like, oh, shit, that is her. I haven't seen her since she was, you know, 13 or 14 in a movie. Um, yeah, I knew I knew she'd done so. Yeah, it's Anna Anna Klumski. She I knew she'd done some stuff as an adult, but uh, yeah, the the only one that like they that really stood out in this cast is like people I knew was Kevin Bacon. Obviously, the rest of these people are all pretty young. I assume TV and theater actors, maybe. Seemed like it. I was looking up what Anna Klumski's done recently as an adult. There's a sequel to My Girl? What the fuck? My Girl 2? You haven't seen my... Oh, you you don't have a little sister, do you? <laughs> no, I have an older sister. Ah, uh, I have a little sister. So I have seen My Girl 2 at least five or six times. <laughs> what um, the fuck? She, she is older, younger teens, and she goes to California... To see her her uncle who plays adult Stan and the Tim Curry it, whatever his fucking name is, I that's just how I remember him. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, the singing. Did, you've seen Tim Curry's it, right? Yeah, it's been a while. Oh, the guy that's the headless or the the decapitated head talking to them in the fridge, the guy that kills himself when they find out. But anyway, that guy plays her uncle in the first movie. And she's out visiting him for whatever fuck because they couldn't get Dan Aykroyd to do the sequel. <laughs> He's listed in the cast on Google. Oh, is he? Maybe maybe yeah. he and Jamie Lee Curtis like send him off or send her off to California or maybe they're in a flashback. But I remember most of the story is like she goes to visit the mm. uncle and she f gets romantically interested in her uncle's girlfriend's kid or something like that. Oh, uh, I think the uncle is Richard Mauser who's actually in the thing. He plays um the dude that yes. keeps the kennel, the dog yes, the dog the guy. guy. Is it Clark? It's not Clark. Clark, yeah, is watch Clark? Clark. Yeah. Okay. He play yeah, that's Clark from okay. the thing. Richard there Mauser. Yes. Fucking Ben Stein's in this movie. He turned into a fucking douchebag. <laughs> I'll be goddamned. Yeah, I had no idea there was a sequel to My Girl. Uh, yeah, I, think was... <laughs> I assume Austin O'Brien filling in the uh, Macaulay Culkin role. Yeah, it, it would have been cool if they had Macaulay Culkin come back like uh, Jack and American Werewolf in London. He's list He's also listed in the credits for this. So I assume there is a flashback of him, maybe. I'm sure. Even if it's maybe just like a boy, or if they used any footage from like the first movie, they might have to credit him somehow. But anyway, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think Kristen Glover got that when they ripped off his image for Back to the Future Two. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Tangents. De yeah, tangents, derailed. Tangents. Another my derailed. My girl too. Marijuana yep. to my girl. She's also the little Anna Klumski's also the little girl in Uncle Buck, which is definitely a movie that we had a lot of watched a lot as kids. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just it's not a ton of credits on here that I can see. But so, yep, she's the nurse. Zane, the cured gay man, is the athletics director that has weird competition issues with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. And his cured wife likes to hit on teenage girls. And there's, of course, like a 70s or 80s slasher type movie. There is the creepy groundskeeper guy. I forget what his fucking name was, like Balthazar or some yep. shit. Balthazar Riggs, by, played by Mark Ashworth. Yeah. So, you know, there is some slasherness in this movie. And I think this is how we can just sort of like, I think we both kind of recommend it to anybody that's listening to the show right now. Uh, but like I, a lot of the menace and fear and like aggression in this movie is just in, gets his like, legs kicked out from underneath it. Yeah. At least that's how I felt. Like this is like this does set up like a what could have been like a really creepy, really fucked up movie, and they 
didn't really choose to like there's like a musical number that comes out of nowhere in the middle of this which i wasn't like it's referencing something that i feel like i'm a year or two or too old for because i don't know what the fuck they were talking about through a few parts of this and uh yeah it, it undercuts the horror like a lot and the ending is kind of goofy but also very in 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 the lane of a cheesy slasher movie kind of, but uh, yeah, this, this, this movie is, could, I, this could have been like a, this could have been a completely different movie, I guess, but you know, maybe, maybe that's just not the movie they wanted to make because, you know, <laughs> real life is pretty depressing by itself. Right. Right. I, I did like the use of, you know, uh, especially building to villainy of some characters uh, oh yeah they're all terrible and, and, and some of them in really not subtle ways uh, but but you know it like I, the villains in this uh, i thought were written really well too like a lot of just as, especially kevin bacon's character you almost buy that he's not a bad guy at the at the beginning <laughs> of the movie and that he's not a horrible fucking villain but you know you know he is because you know what kind of movie this is and uh, yeah, they they do a good job of like you're kind of questioning that at the beginning of the movie, and you're like maybe these kids are just like little shitheads kind of that have problems they need to work through. And uh, yeah, you, it's not really a spoiler because you know what kind of movie this is to yeah. say that there there's more to it than that. And no, these are not good people, and the kids are all right. But yeah, that's they them. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say check it out. It's 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 worth a watch, especially if you're. It is into stuff like this. You probably, I don't know if you can watch it for free on Peacock. I forget why I have the regular, like, $3 a month paid for Peacock, but maybe because it's $3 a month. They have cool stuff around Halloween time, at least. Yeah. <laughs> My you probably forgot to cancel it. Peacock. Oh, go ahead. I, I just say, you probably forgot to cancel it after Halloween time or something if you don't remember why you have it. Yeah, right. Uh, it definitely was. They do have, I know a lot of people like wrestling. It does have like all of the old WWF stuff. Okay. That might from, be fun to jump like, into at some night, point. They've got all of the WrestleManias. I think all of the Royal Rumbles and Survivor a, Series and shit. That's about the last time I really actually like actively followed any kind of wrestling was in the like NWO, WCW kind of days. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time. No offense to our friends out there that know about all this shit. But. Horror fans and wrestling fans. There's definitely a huge fucking like uh, like uh, the, the Venn di- diagram, <laughs> diagram is almost a circle. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So yeah, uh, they do have that, and they get all the sure. they they have a, they usually have a pretty solid collection of the universal horror stuff around halloween time because that's you know Vi- viacom universal for they share all the rights to that shit so I mean, universal has been one of those studios that's like even even nowadays when you know studios are taking zero fucking risks on anything universal has been pretty good about putting out a couple of real fucking oddball shits every year like i mean this year it was like cocaine bear and renfield which I, i'm sure probably made their money back but weren't like you know colossal fucking hits or anything so i mean so somebody's probably losing money so the universal can continue putting out these goofy fucking movies so i, I do kind of salute the balls on them as far as that goes yeah so the fucking writer's strike is still going on as of this recording it is uh so i, I don't know what's uh, does that include writers for award shows? Because I, like, I feel like they're still having award shows throughout the summer. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I would assume the people who work on those are probably union, but maybe not. And I'm sure that's something you could probably pretty easily like. You can't just hire anybody to write like an episode of you know fucking the bear or you know shit like that but you could probably hire just about any fucking schlub to write a shitty awards show yeah uh, uh, instead of you know giving in to the workers i think that's how we ended up with the last uh reality tv boom was the last writer strike and right studios were just well, fuck it we gotta make reality something reality tv
Which, Which reality TV on. has its its fair share of writing going on. I recently caught an episode of Hoarders that I think was from one of the more recent episodes. And like I, I watched about five minutes of it and I turned to my wife and I said, they got really good writers on the show because these people talk like nobody actually fucking talks. Like they talk like they're reading off of cue cards and like being fed shit to say. And it's really weird and distracting. I feel like that show didn't used to do that. And it was a little bit more like just, you know, run and gun and film kind of style. Um, or like so. intervention. Like <laughs> <laughs> that shit's fucking that's <coughs> that's raw and real. It's probably going to be a bunch now on uh, HBO. I mean, Max. Because, you know, rebranding a name that everybody's known f- since the what? The 80s. Yeah, early 80s. They're like, nah, fuck it, whatever, Max. It's all of these things put together, which has, yeah, like... That's, that's, that's a bad idea when you're becoming this giant conglomerate that gobbles up all these fucking companies and assuming that, like, people will just, you know, forget about those and it'll be this this convenient thing to have everything under one roof. Like, Facebook pretty much tried has been trying this for years and years now with meta and trying to also be like a virtual reality thing and a selling thing and there wasn't there like facebook dating at some point like real briefly and it was a horrible fucking disaster and they tried to do like be like indeed with job listings and yeah there's there's very much a thing such a thing as these companies trying to do way too fucking much and it becomes not convenient and it becomes a big turnoff I think the dating thing is still happening because... Is it? I accidentally had... Yes. Uh, when I open the app, I usually only go in through the group that I admin. But it's home, watch, marketplace, dating, notifications, <coughs> menu. And if I click on dating, welcome to Facebook dating. New ways to date, 100% pre, oh free. Free. Really? privacy first blah 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 get started question mark I'm like no i have like fantasy football and shit on here now too I fantasy really want games to switch to fantasy hockey huh i wonder if this is because yeah we've been the, the old midnight horror show boys using the fucking yahoo fantasy system for football i wonder i wonder if facebook sucks a little bit less it would be easier to use I don't know, but it would require change. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's hilarious that there is Facebook dating on here. <laughs> Not ready to start dating. Nope. Exit. Fucking leave me alone. I mean, anyway. So, so to t- kind of tie up the the they them talk, I went to my first Pride like event ever this year, which well, we apparently do in our tiny ass little town of. I don't know, there's. 20,000 people here or something like that. Not very fucking many. Uh, it was it was r- remarkably chill and calm. <laughs> I yeah. don't get I don't get what the conservatives are so fucking it, it felt like a it felt like a bake sale or something. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot I could booths and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there there's a lot of booths which was cool like and there was a lot of companies that like so one of our local politicians I can't remember who off the top of my head got real shitty about because she found a picture of all the sponsors that had like like the Red Cross had a booth and the Humane Society for Animals had a booth and the the suicide prevention people like all these people is like this fucking dumb bitch wrote this scathing Facebook thing that was like boycott all of these people and it's like the red cross yeah really suicide people is like the veteran outreach people i'm pretty sure are out there too it's like what the fuck lady (laughs) did you even look at this and yeah they're just there with a booth they're handing out you know rainbow themed you know pamphlets and items you know target had a huge booth where they're giving away all kinds of fucking free shit so everybody had the same like rainbow sunglasses and umbrellas and shit like you know fill you up a swag bag while you're walking around looking at the booths and that was pretty much it there was there was a bunch of people there like i was there 
as it was winding down because I think I had to work part of that day or maybe I had to work after or something. But anyway, like I, I was there as it was winding down and there was quite a few people there and yeah, a lot, lots of people there with their kids and pretty fucking mellow, man. I don't, I don't really... Uh, they they had like a march through the streets i think like the next day or something which i didn't i didn't end up going to i think i had to work for that but uh yeah the actual like pride fest event as it was was in like the 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 i don't really it's it's in like the middle of our downtown kind of it's it's almost like an amphitheater slash park like for city events type shit like they do like free concerts and stuff down there uh, in the summertime and uh yeah it was it was like like i was almost bored it was so chill <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was expecting something but like uh i, I don't know it, it, i was happy you know I, I was happy that this existed like it, it was something that you know teenage me probably wouldn't have thought possible and i'm sure they they started somewhere they started real small and now it's like not a super huge thing, but like they've got it down, like dialed in pretty well. So that it's a, a very chill, very family friendly, you know, kind of just go hang out and go down and socialize and go to the booths kind of thing. So I don't know. It was cool. I'll probably go again next year. Nice. Uh, I ha- I did not go to my city's pride. They probably have big old fucking pride parties and events in your city, huh? It, it's it's pretty huge. Uh, the the parade kind of kicks it off, and you know, uh, it, yeah, it's pretty huge. There's a l- decent amount of corporate, uh, corporate pride. The Bud Light float rolls rolls by. Yeah, and you know, uh, some do other different things than others. But we've got a really good uh, youth center here called the Kaleidoscope Youth Center. Uh, yeah, you've mentioned them before. Yeah, I'm a big supporter of them. They're for, you know, like anybody youth, but they really kind of work on like tweens and teens and young adults. They have like an alternative prom and they do all these other things. And uh, they're generally who the hockey team does that they're, they're like Pride Month charity money for. Uh, that's cool. And so uh, the hockey, the mascot marches in the parade every year uh, so do some of the writers that follow the teams and stuff especially the writers that talk about social issues and uh, I have a f- trying to keep it vague enough uh, I have a family member with a uh, non-binary child right who is getting to that age where they uh, they wanted to march in the parade this year so Ah. Fam- family member and uh, their kid who like there's some really I think weird and clunky uh, non-binary terms for uh, you know because like cousin cousin is you know gender neutral but yeah. you know son daughter niece nephew aunt uncle like all those oh. are like yeah. What's the non-binary version of that? And it's like child, child, siblings, siblings, child, siblings, parent. You know. Uh, yeah. Stuff, stuff <laughs> like, but so I, I'm being clunky and vague or whatever because it's not my story to tell. And um, <clears throat> you know, but but they they were very stoked to do it and you know they've had not really any at least especially in our family it's all like fucking awesome you know tell me if anybody fucks with you and i'll kick their ass sort yeah. of sort of shit but there are some people that are like i support you but i'm gonna mess everything up i'm gonna misgender you all the time and yeah stuff and there's people that are like okay old person let me work with you on this uh, that sort of thing. And I also have a family member in high school who uh, just came out as gay and is, you know, very afraid to tell their dad. And Which is pretty common. Yeah, yeah, very common. So, uh, I don't know. It's like I, I'm just realizing now that I I feel like I need to tell these family members, especially 
if I know them through their parent in the family, you know, more right. being closer <clears throat> to my age, uh, I, I should probably tell them like, Hey, give, give your kid my number. If they ever need like a adult, technically male figure <laughs> to, I guess someone to, t- yeah, to talk to you about yeah. shit, you know? Yeah, there, there's definitely <laughs> there, there's a way of doing that that's uber fucking creepy, and <laughs> there's a way of doing that that is really cool and really beneficial to queer youth. And yeah, I mean, there's been studies that like as as long as a young person is, is somewhere on that spectrum, uh, as long as they have one fucking adult in their life that is supportive of them and their lifestyle, then like their chances of committing suicide go way fucking down. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's important that young people have mentors like that. But yeah, happy birthday! It's I, you will not be hearing this during Pride Month. <laughs> Tomorrow's but, the first, so all the corporate logos are going to lose their rainbows. Yeah, uh, and, you know, the ones that they'll start matching the, the you know, the corporate Twitter account in Saudi Arabia, which never changed. Oh. Um, or China. Yeah, China. <laughs> um, you don't understand. Here, here's these military plans. <laughs> I was lying. <laughs> These aren't not, technically I'm not a thief, declassified. I'm just a liar. Oh God, yeah. Uh, it took me about five seconds. I, I remember waking up that day and getting on Facebook and seeing all the fucking memes with the piles of boxes and the shitter. And it took me about five seconds to realize what the fuck the whole story on that was. <laughs> yeah. Did you see somebody did that to uh, the Hollywood star of fame or whatever? I don't think so. Did what to the Hollywood star of fame? Somebody took, uh, cause he has one, I think for the, the, the apprentice. Yeah. Whatever. It gets, it gets defaced all the time. Somebody set up a thing with a bunch of those office boxes and a toilet and police tape around <laughs> his, uh, Hollywood star. <laughs> and, uh, it was a week or two ago. Uh, uh. I don't know how long it lasted, but it lasted long enough for there to be photographs. You know, that, that's all that matters. God bless those those merry pranksters in the night wearing ski masks, lugging fucking toilets down Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> like, that takes work. Y- y- we gotta lean into the absurdism. Uh, it's yeah. The only, it's the only way. It's, it's the only way we're gonna get through this. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how how long we've been recording to, to give an update on the mushroom gummies. I don't know if they're doing anything. It oh. might be too early to tell. Like, and I, like I, I've been ingesting a little bit of THC during all of this. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm feeling that more than I'm feeling the, the magic mushies. <laughs> it's like in, uh, did you ever see that movie go? Uh, yeah. Movies, early two thousands. Yeah. That's probably about the last time I saw it. Um, when she's <coughs> selling the fake ecstasy, she's like, oh, just, it's really, it, it, you feel it a lot if you get a lot, if you smoke a lot of pot, <laughs> It'll really make the ecstasy kick in, just smoke a whole lot of pot. Like, yeah, I totally feel it, man. Um, I was, yeah, I would say there was a minute there that y- y- I was thinking you were talking like a guy on mushrooms. We've been talking for about an hour. Uh, um, but it's also just kind of the way we talk when we talk with each other, no, va- no matter what's been imbibed, consumed or absorbed into our systems. It's been a very stream of consciousness kind of show when we record sometimes. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe it could kick in. I know one of the like wildest trips I ever had. I never really got a lot from mushrooms. Right. Uh, but it was a friend's graduation night and I, we we each took like a 10 strip and like three hours later we were talking which is a lot for, for the layman that's like 10 hits of lsd 
we were we didn't think anything was happening, so we each took five more. Jesus. <laughs> and like I don't even have that much experience with that particular substance, but I know that's a lot. Oh, it was a lot. We we ended up out in like some fucking like burnt up structure. We we set up a, a tent. Uh, like, you know, there was like three or four of us, and there was some burnt out structure that my brain remembers as being a place that was burned down because somebody said it was haunted. But that sounds like something I would tell myself. That's that, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, just like way out of town, like in the middle of nowhere, uh, when everything kicked in, we're like, well, I guess we're gonna hang out somewhere around here. <laughs> I guess we're staying here for a while. Yeah. Um, Hope you got nothing to do for the next about month. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the the one time I, or the not one time, a couple times that I tried uh, the mushrooms, and it sort of reminded me of being really stoned, really high, really elevated, really whatever the fuck the kids call it these days. See, I've had like 100 milligram edibles that I was questioning. I was like, did my guy give me some mushroom fucking chocolates on accident <laughs> or something? But yeah. yeah, for mushrooms to feel like a good weed high, that's, that's, that's some fucking weak ass fucking weak ass ones. It, it was some guy in high school, you know? <laughs> yeah. Probably be way cooler now, but I don't know when the fuck I've got five to eight hours of free time ah uh, yeah that's you know? that's my problem too that's why this is yeah usually like a once or twice a year kind of thing last last time i did the the was a bachelor party was which was last july i think oh, nice. so nice. yeah it wouldn't be like a tolerance thing you know, of course these are amanitas so i mean that's a completely different thing but like you know if you, if you can't do psychedelics super often and still have them have the same effect usually you know, maybe you need to eat <coughs> two packets of them. Yeah, I do. I do have another one. I might might do that after we get off this call and see what happens. Well, wait. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> Think about that first. True. Because uh, if everything kicks in in two or three hours, <laughs> it might be. I don't think I have anything to do tomorrow, as far as I recall. Okay. You'll have to report back. So. Yeah. We have dozens of listeners that'll be on the edge of your seat. <laughs> hey, these are ve vegan too. <laughs> oh, so we're going to do that. Uh, we could keep going, but we have talked about a regular, okay, ramble length uh, thing. So do not feel any pressure. I know you went straight from work to the mic. Yeah. Pretty, pretty close. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else we... I think we about covered everything we, were, uh, we, were, we talked about covering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, happy Pride, everybody. The Supreme Court is on vacation with their billionaire benefactors. Nope. So you've got a few months before they can fuck up your life anymore. Mm. Definitely don't rob their houses while they're on vacation. Do not. That would be a terrible thing to do. They're probably being guarded by... <laughs> The Heritage Foundation and the Proud yeah. Boys and fucking Blackwater. Yeah. Um, Marjorie Green and Lauren Boebert with all their guns. Sleep which I think I, I saw, thought I saw that they hate each other now, which I think is a good thing. There was a spat on a little tiff. the floor of Congress between Marjorie Green and Lauren Boebert. God, they're both psychos. <laughs> Them hating each other would probably be an okay thing. Yeah. Uh, she, I believe they are saying Marjorie Green is too establishment. And she, um, Lauren Boebert introduced articles of impeachment for Biden before Marjorie Green did. And the basic <laughs> uh, reporting was there's video of them are looking like they're arguing. Everybody's gesticulating, but you, all you can hear is the person with the gavel. Like I remind everybody of congressional decorum. Could you take your conversations out of the aisle? Because it was like during a vote. Uh. Um, and then, uh, then the next story of it was that Marjorie green called Lauren Boebert, a stupid little bitch. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think then I saw Marjorie that. Marjorie Green said, "This is so fucking high school." And then Marjorie Green said, "Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I said." And then she was mad because she had articles of impeachment. She said, "You copied my articles of impeachment, and then you put them in first, and then you put <laughs> it's like it's fucking shit show, like more of a shit. It's like the shit show that you know." people were saying Congress was when they were being ex- a little exaggerated. Uh, I mean, it's like Saturday Night Live. It's or, an actual circus. Yeah, it is a circus, and the clowns are in charge, and uh, Kevin McCarthy... Uh, uh, well, fuck. We don't want to get into the deep shit. But anyway, yes, they are fighting, and they are fighting over who is the biggest Looney Tune. Um... Joe Biden is basically wilting. He's but turning into dust in front yeah, of us. He drank from the wrong grail. And, <laughs> uh, he's still mostly like, I'm better than Trump. Which he's not wrong. Which he's not wrong, but that's what he said last time. It, 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 but then it was, I'm better than Trump, and I'll do student loan forgiveness, and I'll raise the minimum wage, and... We'll do all this other stuff that didn't happen. Yeah. Now it's, hey, at least I'm not Trump. Yeah. And then Trump is, you have to say, I, you have to elect me and I will save you from the radical Marxist FBI who, <laughs> if they could come after me for hundreds or dozens at least, boxes of top secret <laughs> documents, they could come after you. Yep. You Keeping committed massive, massive fraud on a global scale. It could happen to you, too. Yeah. Like, well, he's keeping them in a bathroom, which has a lock on the door. I was like, yeah, it has a lock on the door. You can lock it from the inside when you're reading all the shit. But what bathroom door locks from the outside? Ugh. Yeah, the ones in the, the, the fucking Playboy Mansion, probably. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe for different reasons uh <laughs> so yes well, well that's Happy a fine Pride. note to end on <laughs> well, yeah, Pride, everybody. um think about ways to enjoy yourself and to help the people that these lunatics are going after for the lulls or for the likes or to own the libs um we we have here we 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 got it well it is now no longer Pride Month in my part of the country, but nope. it is in yours. Uh, so I, it's it's the the Gremlins paradox. But I will say Happy Pride Month anyway. The the corporate rainbow logos may may fade away, but the ones in your hearts will not. Yeah. The end. The <laughs> end. Ta da. He did what we 